Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 137. TidyX is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name's Ellis Hughes. And my name's Patrick Ward. Thanks for tuning in to TidyX. As always, remember to hit like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Drop your questions and comments below, and maybe we'll get to them on a, on a future episode, just like we're doing today. And uh, we like doing this, and if you feel like our work has in some way impacted yours and you'd like to uh, go to our Patreon page and make a donation, we're super appreciative of anything that uh, you may interested be interested in giving. Uh, so with that exactly. said, we'll jump into TidyX137. So um, we've, we've kind of had a bevy of um, uh, viewer-supported episodes uh, lately in terms of uh, questions and, and things, and uh, which has been really cool. The interaction on the YouTube channel has been awesome. People chiming in and saying, oh, that's great, but I'm trying to do this instead, or I have this little wrinkle. And um, so uh, last week we had a viewer question. This week we got a new viewer question, and it was uh, from an individual who, uh, it's kind of a cool job. They basically laid it out as they have uh, uh, they deal with like a, a school and teachers, mm -hmm. uh, the students, the grading teachers. And what they want is they want a way to build a markdown file that shows a one tab per, per teacher and the, uh, the student grades that they get. And um, that's super awesome. Uh, but their question was, I don't want to have to sit here and create a new tab for every single individual teacher manual. Oh, yeah. And we've talked about tab sets before and we've done this before. And so their question was, is there a way to just do this in a for loop? And um, this is the quick and dirty solution that we came up with that hopefully uh, gets you what you want. So for, you know, whoever it was that submitted, submitted the question, thanks so much. And um, yeah. yeah, let's, we'll, we'll jump in. I, I created some fake data for us to just play with. Um, it's just a simple little uh, sports performance data set. We've got three players and we've got some, uh, just some random data that we called performance. And so mm -hmm. it's just going to be this data set where we have 400 observations of performance for each individual. And um, we're just going to create in one single chunk, a loop that builds a tab for Bob, a tab for Cam and a tab for AJ and plots the density, uh, the histogram rather of the, um, the distribution and performance for each of those individuals. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly uh, take a step back here. So this is this this is just in our markdown, right? So it's got the standard YAML at the very top here. We've got our title, obviously name that whenever you want. The date that it's being made, um, the output. Here we're making an HTML document. Of course, you can set that to be whatever sort of document that makes sense. For tab sets, it's probably going to be HTML. And um, then we have this keep MD true, and we'll get to that in a second here. Um, then we have this uh, pound sign pound sign tab set. And that's what tells Markdown, we're about to create some tab set content that anything that is three hashtags is now a tab. So anything beneath yeah. that, that's one one more inset, that is going to be a tab. Uh, and, we have our... it, and so if you're going to do this one by one, you'd have to do hashtag, hashtag, hashtag Bob, and then put their plot in. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag Cam and then their plot, hashtag, hashtag, hashtag AJ, and then their plot. Obviously, if you're someone who works for like a school district and you got 150 teachers, that's going to be pretty tedious. So that's what we're going to try and solve for today. Exactly. So we're going to, you know, create a quick chunk here. This is the initialization. This is probably where you'd be pulling in the data. We're going to set echo to false and message to false because we don't want any messages to be being produced in the output. Uh, we're going to set the option chunks. So this is for the rest of the chunks of the R markdown. Echo to false, warning to false, message to false, because we don't want it. Again, we want the output to be clean. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to set library tidyverse for all our data manipulation needs and the simulated data as Patrick talked to. Now we're going to do the chunk that is going to be the workout workhorse function that is going to be producing all the output for these different tab sets here. Um, one key thing is for this chunk, we are going to need to set the results option of the R chunk to as is. And what that does is it tells our markdown, don't make any edits to the output of this. If um, Put the results as is in the resulting document um, and we'll in the markdown document that it produces. And we'll get to that in a second here. Patrick, do you want to take us through the code that's actually doing it? 
Yeah. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to identify how many individuals we're dealing with. So in our case, we only have three and uh, we use unique here because remember we have 1000 observations per person. So if we weren't going to use unique, we'd get a whole bunch of tabs <laughs> when we do this. So uh, we're going to get three tabs back. Um, now the workhorse here is going to be the for loop. So we're going to basically loop over uh, a variable which we'll call player, which we call player of interest, um, in the player's uh, uh, the player's vector. Okay, um, so <clears throat> we're basically going to loop over this and subset out each one of those players' names, and we're going to call them players of interest. Inside of this for loop, the cat function, which is uh, concatenate and print, um, we have two. Uh, basically like new line, new line, and then three hashtags. Remember Ellis said, we set our tab set to be two hashtags. So three hashtags means we're creating a new tab. And so we're going to say, hey, three hashtags, we want a new tab for this player of interest. That's what we want to call that tab. So we're going to have a tab that says Bob. And then we set those new lines, new lines, so that our markdown knows, hey, we've got stuff coming underneath it. Boom, boom, boom. Here's some stuff. Um, we're just going to create like a little, we'll show that, you know, you can put some text in here if you wanted. So we'll use cat again and we'll show, uh, this is some plot summarizing how whoever the player of interest is in that for loop, whoever's turn it is to go, um, how, how, are, how they perform. And again, we end that with, with new line, new line. And now we get into our simple plot and this is just standard tidyverse type stuff. We're going to take that original data set and we're filtering when the player is equal to the player of interest within that subset of the loop, whichever, wherever it lands. And then we're going to do a histogram plot. So we're going to take that subset of for that player's data and we're just going to make our simple gg plot histogram x axis is performance and we're plotting the histogram and a key thing within for loops that i always forget and then it drives me crazy because i can't figure out what's going on is you gotta hit have if you're doing a gg plot you have to do print and then the plot name uh if you're doing this in base r you can just roll with the plot but if you're doing it with with the gg plot you gotta hit print name uh print name of the plot um and and that's it i mean this is like Again, if you had a school district with 100 people, we've just literally looped over all 100 of those people's um, student grades and printed out a tab for each person in literally 20 lines of code. So that's it. Uh, 20 lines of code. Boom. The report is done. And then at the bottom here, uh, just kind of showing that you can add other stuff. So maybe this is a this is a new section. Now you see that it has two hashtags, so it's not going to be a new tab. It's going into the first level of our tab set, which is the, the primary level. So this will show up on every single, this table that we're going to build, that's going to show up on every single one of our tabs because it's at the primary level. And we're just making a uh, summary, a mean and standard deviation of performance. So let's say like maybe the teachers want to compare them selves to the other teachers. So they see their distribution of performance and then they see the average and standard deviation for maybe all other teachers within the school district or something like that. Again, this will be showing for each person. If you want to do this, let's say th that individual teacher's actual data in its own table, you just throw this in the for loop and have it print out the table for you. So you could, you could easily do that as well. And so maybe it's just the player of interest, boom, and, and maybe it's like all of their data as a as a tab as a table or some a searchable table or something like that. Uh, yeah. And that's it. So we're gonna knit this and again, 20 lines of code, and we can loop over however many people we want and build a quick report pretty easily. There it is. And boom. so boom. So we've got a uh, now, you know, it doesn't look pretty. We haven't prettified it, but um uh, the nuts and bolts are there. So if we switch to cam, we see the data changes. We see the table below is always the same. So that's always going to be the mean and standard deviation of the other players. Um, that does that content doesn't change because it's at the two hashtag level. So that's a little, I mean, that's it. 20 lines of code and we got there super easy, quick and dirty. Um, Ellis, why don't you just, you know, for like, whatever, five or six minutes, walk us through what's going on under the hood when we do this so that people have a little bit of an understanding of how this is working and how R has kind of simplified our life a little bit. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so um, basically the idea here is the way that our markdown works 
is it's going to you work in your RMD file, right? Or uh, and you you do your typing, write all of your stuff out. But then when it renders it, it doesn't go directly to HTML, right? Even though we're saying here R Markdown HTML document, it actually will take this R Markdown, runs all the code, and produces a Markdown document, which is why here I wrote keep MD true. So it's lowercase in YAML to identify true. And so we've got all these additional files here. So this is the HTML file that we produced that we were just looking at. But we also have this markdown document because I told it to keep it. And so this is what gets generated by our markdown as part of the process of generating this output. So even if you're going out to PDF, if you're going out to um, the Word document or whatever, there's always going to be this intermediary markdown document that gets produced. And so any content that you put in your R markdown, as long as it's viable markdown content or something that could be handled by uh, Pandoc, which is the engine that converts it from markdown into a different output, it's totally a viable output here. And so that's why we set this results equals as is. If we don't do that, it's going to here. Why don't we put another quick little chunk in here at the very bottom and then uh, our and just have it do like a, I don't know, print out uh, one, two, three, four. Hmm. Let's quickly uh, knit that. And what's going to happen is this is going to print it out. Um, here it prints it out in, in this nice code chunk. But if we look at this markdown document here, it's wrapped it in code ticks, which in, our, or in markdown, this is identifying to markdown that this is code or a code, code section here, it puts these uh, hashtags in front of the actual output to tell it that this is output content and, and protect it. And so that's if you don't put the um, as is around it. And so because we put as is results equals as is in this, this chunk here, it's allowing this content to be printed out exactly as it is. So it's going new line. So it's going to Go from here you see how we have all these spaces here that slash n says okay now go down a new line go down a new line now it's going to print out exactly those three hashtags and bob then we say okay now go down two two more new lines so one two now it's going to print out this exactly as we wrote it this is some plot uh, some plot summarizing how player performs new line new line so then it goes down again new line new line then we're telling it to print out the ggplot, which it's using this syntax here. This is markdown syntax to identify to uh, this table is the output here. Yeah. Um, because we said to keep MD, it also has the temporary files that it generates as part of the process. So these figures are the uh, figures that the ggplot outputs that get saved. And so it repeats the same process, how it goes, then new line, new line, cam, new line, new line, <laughs> plot summarizing how player performs new line new line so all it's doing is just kind of stepping through that and so realistically you can put any any markdown or any text that is markdown compatible in this and and have it produce an output and so that's kind of a nice feature if you understand how that works you can then take advantage of the fact that you can do really complicated outputs using this sort of behavior or if you're working in a different output other than html like using uh, PDF that often that takes um, LaTeX output. So if you know LaTeX, you can write out your own LaTeX outputs and LaTeX structures that mm -hmm. are wrapped inside of, of results as is. Cat out that content and have your PDF document formatted in a special way as well. So mm -hmm. it's a really powerful thing to kind of understand the back end of what's going on with our, these R Markdown documents to be able to further your abilities of creating custom outputs. Yeah. So that's kind super of a quick cool. summary of it. Yeah, super cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but that is how you can go um, from a create this tab set here, have a bunch of different tabs for all those different teachers and, and produce that output without having to do a ton of copy and paste where you might mess something up. And all of a sudden the teacher is complaining that they've got the wrong grades assigned to them because you, mm -hmm. you didn't mm -hmm. update the value um, because you did this a hundred different times and boy, was that a pain. Yep. Totally. So with that, 
I think we can call episode 137. Thank you for joining us so much. As always, my name's Ellis Hughes. You can find me on yeah. Twitter at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick at tidy underscore explained is where we both are collectively on Twitter. Tidy dot explained at gmail.com is where you can email us. But the most likely way to get in touch with us, uh, which we're very appreciative and feel like the last few weeks we've gotten great um, comments and questions and feedback. So I feel like we're kind of connecting to people in, in terms of trying to help them out. That YouTube channel, you like and subscribe, you drop your comments down below and we'll hit you back. And hopefully one of your questions will end up on the show. Uh, again, uh, if you feel like our work has in some way positive, it positively impacted you and you'd like to donate, we do have a Patreon page. We're always thankful uh, for anything that you may give. Thank you all so much and keep on exploring your world. <laughs>